<laughs> that's that's okay. That's great. I would like to start this game. But hi everyone, my name is Lucifer, and welcome to God is in the radio. I will I will say that Devil's in the radio because it's me playing. Excuse you, but this game is um, part of the universe of uh, Fatal Frame and the other games that I've played in that universe. Link down links down in the dis description below for those videos. And, uh, and also Limerence, that one. And this one, I think, is the next one in, in the line. I, I think so. Uh, I, I know that you, you, you don't have to play them in order. They're not, like, sequentially connected. But I still thought it was really cool to play something else in the universe of this game. Little by little, slowly by slowly, because, you know, got to get through it a little bit. God is in the radio, and we all yearn to meet him. I think this is, like, a fantastical world with, like, religious aspects to it, so... I, I'm also using this as a way to like know like the story that's being crafted by this developer, but also to incorporate this into my D&D &D world because um, one, thing, one thing that I want to do in a new campaign at some point is like properly like world build. Like the one that, I've, that I'm doing one right now with Nyla and Hannah, uh, it's very like cobbled together, like pushed together and everything uh, on the spot stuff. And we're having fun with that and I accepted that for what it is. But down the line, I want to make something like like proper world building, uh, proper stories for everything. And one of the things that is important in D and D is um, gods because they're part of the world and part of the creation and everything like that. And I wanted to make like a proper cool thing about it, and maybe you know incorporate incorporate in, 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 incorporate that into a story somehow. And uh, this seems to be one of those kind of games. I'm you know kind of like taking mental notes about it as well. So yeah. Whoa! I also got hot water. Uh, because uh, I've been drinking too much tea while making these videos because my throat is dying. But you get yourself something nice, nice to drink, and uh, yeah, all the time that you're awesome, and thank you for watching. Halloween is Satan's day. Hey, it me! His devils pry the earth open, and spread like a miasma of evil infect even the most radiant of minds. The damned walk among the devout without blessing to send them to back to hell. I love this beginning already. I love the words. I have like a couple, I have, I think, devout uh, miasma uh, in like the words that I, that I want to use for D&D. &D. Like, I, like I have a separate list of like words that I want to use for D&D &D because I want to start using more words and get better at storytelling and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I love this already. I love the music. I love this. Uh, yeah. On these nights in, in past few years, we have done our best to fend off the wicked. We offer daffodils to women in witch hats in hopes that they cast their evil dress aside and beg for forgiveness. Yeah, you know, you, you know, uh, you know how to pick up, you know, how to pick up women. You go to them on the street, you give them a flower and you tell them to beg for forgiveness. That, that goes great, I, I, I've heard. We painted music notes on our doors and, ha and hung parsley from the handles and we huddled inside. Why do you hang coriander? That, is coriander really? No, I don't think it is. Holding, isn't like, uh, no, not rosemary, there's um, sage, isn't that the one that you have to hang outside? Holding hands and singing songs. We try to pray the horrors away. No one would accept them unless they were coated in sugar and dropped into pillowcases. That's just how it be, you know, it's just like dogs, they don't like medicine, they'll spit it out. You gotta coat it with other stuff and I have to like shove it up somehow. Same thing with humans, you know, people like have tastes and even though something can be healthy, if it doesn't taste good, no one's gonna actually, um... Uh, no one's gonna actually uh, blah blah blue blue. No one's gonna actually uh, do eat the thing. If I could only concentrate on what I was saying, <laughs> that'd be nice. If I could only concentrate on me and not knowing what to do for D and D, that'd be nice. God has given us a gift today. He has. Is it me? For I have come on this day of mine. The high priestess delivered a message at the dawn of this sinful day. Oh. He has given us the greatest of gifts, she cried out, tears unseen through her mask, but felt by all of those. I, I'm sorry if my voice is a bit bad, or for like, uh, voices. Uh, it is bad because I've been recording a lot, because I have exams coming up, and I'm just on like, a speed recording kind of thing. Uh, and I had like two consecutive D&D &D days, and oh my god, my throat is not like that, but I like it, so you know, huh. She prittled an object of her salvation in her hands like a mother with a newborn child. A radio. He told me that he... Here among the radio's waves, weaving his web of glory and light through each station. His sound is angelic. His sound is calming. His sound is bright and rush of sunshine, which instantly cleanses the body of its sorrows. It has made us all happy. It has made us all pure. It has made us all saved. Praise be the almighty light. Praise be the almighty peace. I don't like uh, justifying text, and that is justified text. 
We sang as if our hearts depended, voices hoping it, it, to hit high, uh, notes high enough to take us to the clouds. Well, why don't you turn it on? asked the fool. The childish warmth in his voice brought life to the white rose attached to his coat. If we play his music into the world, they can all be forgiven and sing along. They will be saved. Whoa, you're looking a little obtuse there. Do you just at a time like this? The star replied, hey, you've taken my name. It's Morning Star. Excuse you. Or, well, it's Lucifer Lordo, otherwise known as. I have many names. Her index finger twirled uh, idly around a long strand of hair. All gifts come if we believe that our love is enough. Beauty Almighty has given me the signs and has given me permission to share them with the Arcana. He has given us guidance. He has given us light. We open our ears and our hearts to the instructions of our Lord. He has given me a location for a gathering of songs. It is an old home with crackling, cracking foundation and buggy porches. It, it, it is unexperienced. The song of life since the death of its owners. Would you really want to go there? So it doesn't, you know, maybe, maybe not go there because it might collapse on you. Just maybe don't. Their bodies now are black and sticky like sap, molding deep within the wood, wood floorboards. We're to travel together in two lines. The fool will stand next to the magician. Behind them will be me and the empress, and the list goes on. You all, you each know your numbers. I death will stand with the hanged. I death will stand with the hanged man, on my left on our pilgrimage to de decay. In this house, the rooms are open. His music can flow freely. The high priest has advised, as, as if to calm the hidden uncertainties of the arcana. He has told me uh, doing it in, in the public eye may warrant unwanted attention to ruin our preparation. I felt temperance breath, temperance breathe a heavy sigh of relief behind me. We shall walk side by side for him. We shall sing for sing sweet songs for him. No one sings sweet songs for me. That's not fair. Ra 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 ra. The high priestess cleared her throat and raised her hand above her head, bringing her corner to a pause. I want to press play, but you're pausing it. That's so rude. That's so rude. We shall sit in a circle in the living room in, our, in silence, wait, waiting for a sound to ring in our ears, she continued. The fool will be gifted the radio at whatever the default frequency is. He is free to tune it to whichever channel he wishes. And welcome back to 132.1 uh, Radio FM, where we're going to be talking about the devil. Let's go. <laughs> the fool shall sit down for a few moments and listen to his sweet song. If the fool's channel is not the one, then the radio is then passed to the magician, who will tune it to whichever channel he wishes. The process, the process will repeat, and the radio may be passed to me, then on to the empress, then on to the rest of the members in their numbers, in their number order until we find the song. I mean, it's kind of like a brute force method, and that's kind of like setting you up to like, oh, like some sort of success. Like you know how people be, uh, are like, you know, they, they have that, that that false sense of success. Like false sense of like, oh, you actually did it. That's what you're doing right now, <laughs> because if someone finds it, someone will eventually find it because you're just ch changing frequencies, and at some point, someone will find it, because that's how an algorithm works. And when someone finds it, you'll be like, oh yes, the Lord's work did it for you, which, you know, not exactly how that works, but sure. I mean, I'm more of like a kind of scientific person. That's how I look at it. But you know, I guess the Lord came to that one singular person and gave it to them to that one frequency, that one number. Mm. Whoever finds the one uh, which he occupies will be granted uh, the life, eternal. Hey, that's mine! No steely! A different sort of hush fell over the room. We all desire the life, eternal. The warmth, eternal. The happiness, eternal. You know, you all want etern eternity, and you're not even looking at the present. That's not how it be going. That's not how it be going, giggity going. No one has witnessed a true life. Eternal since the em the embrace the lovers remarked. I guess we should not be embracing. I guess so. She had always held the ashes of her husband in her hands. She could never escape the burden of her choice. Um, I can't help but notice how she's holding it like in front of her womb. I wonder if that's like a symbolism for holding the husband as well as her womb in a similar place. Something like that. Has he told you? Has he told you if he will grant life eternal to those who have suspended in the emptiness? The high priestess did not respond immediately. 
She closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Because you don't have an answer and you're making this up because you have your feelings. Ha ha ha. He has told me that all will be taken care of, she replied. The almighty light will grant both of you his light. And should you be the one to find the signal, we, we will celebrate and we will find whoever is given such a gift, a suitable replacement to the Arcana. The gift of life, eternal. It made me feel scared. Has an, I have choices? I did not realize that. Uh, Mouse, come back to me, please. I kept it away. Can I save? I can't save. Okay. Um... <laughs> Devil radio, we about to choose something for you. <laughs> I'll say hopeful, why not? Why not? Let's feed into the delusions of grandeur a little bit. To think there was a god as great as ours that could break the in in inevitabil inevitability of me, of death, was fantastic. I had always been excited to see what it would feel like, to, uh, what it would be like to surf forever between sunlight and prisms of color. Life itself would grow in our veins and blossom from each pore. There would be no absolutes to hold us down, such as death itself. May he, may he make us eternal. May he love us eternal. I love how it like transitions to like a new thing to like show like the cult kind of thing happening. Very, very cool. Uh, we are to leave immediately, the high priest has announced, she, clapping her hands together. May his light, his love, his sound guide us home. Why not his touch? Why not his breath? Why not his... Uh, sight. Why not his uh, 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 other feelings of five that I've forgotten? Taste. Why, why not? Yeah. Why, why not his taste? Hmm? Each member of the Arcana collected themselves and began to file into two lines. I looked over to the hanged man whose wrists were eternally bound together. He gave me a smile that I could not see through the mask, but I felt in the way his eye softened. So they have masks on, which only show them, which only show one eye. Very interesting and definitely not a way to skimp on drawing the other eye. Uh, but that's really cool. Um, I think I'm death in this game, right? I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like the personification of death to these people. Interesting. Okay. You're just as excited as your brothers and sisters, aren't you? The hangman asked. Is it because we got, to, we get to show the non-believers his all my love on a day so wicked? I looked out the window. Uh, at the carved pumpkins that lined the windowsills and manufactured decorations that covered the glass and fake spider webs. I nodded. If I as if I could if I could be the vessel of the metamorphosis and show the world the light, the love and the sound, I would be repaying him with my devotion forever. Oh, the choice was not for the god the the the, 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 the priestess person that was for me. I should have chosen something else then. Led by the fool and the magician, we began our journey at the disheveled house in the edge of the town, forgotten by all but his worshippers. Oh, well, that's your house. We sat in silence for the entire walk. Ha wait, what? <laughs> you sat in silence for the entire walk? Don't think that's how that walks. It works. Work walks. Walk works. We wanted to save our songs for whatever sounds God wanted us to reveal to us on his radio. The high priestess carried the radio like the lovers carried her ashes. Both were life, both were second chances. As he approached the house, it couldn't help but reflect on its beauty. It must have been abandoned for a while, as, this, as it was hidden by overgrown trees and its own disrepair. That would be so cool to have like a house which is like overgrown around and only you know where it is. That'd be so cool. Because it'd be so mysterious and cool. Like when I was younger, when I was a kid, I used to like read like a lot of books. I I do want to get back into reading a lot more. But uh, one of the, the like the best stories for me like was like when the kids in like the journey go to go to that secret secret spot, and it's in it, 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 it used to be a small cottage in like the middle of the forest, uh, like next to a cr uh, creek, or um, and it was like overgrown and stuff like that. It's so cool to have like a place that you can go to that only you know, that's hidden and stuff like that. It sounds so cool. Anyways, yes, housey, housey, wowsy, housey. The windows uh, on the upper levels were blooming with splinters and cracks. Mm -hmm. Sounds so safe. Two rocking chairs sat on the patio, missing their soft pillows and decorations. What was most surprising, though, was that the front door was open. What was inside uh, something unknown. I'm not gonna say that's something unknown. Whoa, 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 who knows what it is? Oh, no. 
The door could have blown open by the wind, or perhaps it was unable to hold onto the wall by oxidizing hinges. Teenagers touching the sacred, sacred matter of death could have been exploring and left the door open in a hurry. Whatever it was did not matter. The pathway was open to us now. No. Oh. The house is beautiful, isn't it? The hangman mused, pointing one finger to its rooftop. I could live in these walls with, the, with some cleaning, of course. The history of that we will make will do well for the house market. The rich love I am... These words are going through my head and at right outside. I left the hangman to uh, revel in his own humor, choosing instead to focus on the nature around us. Despite it being the end of October, many leaves which clung helplessly to branches remained green. Dull, desolate greens, but they were, unli they were unlike the warm oranges and yellows that we had seen on our way here. Dead trees that feign life in order to attract the living. There was a shrieking sound that blended into the foliage above us. I tilted my head towards the setting sun to find the source. Oh, it is a very humanistic owl. For some reason, you look very human. I don't know why. Probably your eyes and um, frown. A great horned owl sat on a bare branch that looked as if it curved, curved above the house, forming a wooden dome. I really love the narration of this, and I really want to be as good of a, as a narrator as this. I know, like, writing it would be easier because, you know, um, uh, writing something is easier. And I, I've noticed that, like, when I pre-prepare a narration for my D&D thing, it makes it a lot easier, and, and I feel like I'm being a lot more cinematic, but at the same time, I, I want to be able to come up with these kind of things on the spot. I feel like that's such a cool thing to do, like, immediately like, just go to narration, just, you know, creative brain fart narration, that would be so cool to do, and it's, that's a skill that I want to really work on. And I want to learn, I mean, I, I know the big words, I, I, I just want to be able to, like, use them from, like, a quick repository, re repository in my brain. That would be so cool to do. And, yeah, just, you know. Also, um, I forgot, it. I was, I was going to say that a horned owl, I think, uh, it used to be associated, associated with the devil, I think, at some point. I read it somewhere at some point that horned owls were associated with the devil. Uh, because, you know, they were, like, they looked horned. That's why they were called horned owls. And that's, I think, is really cool. Its howling shook the leaves, which dangled helplessly and caused them to fall. Either to be carried by invisible by an invisible breeze or to find home in the dirt. Once it came within its view, however, its shrieking melted into a silence. Its yellow eyes bare, bore into mine and froze me in place. I felt something bump in, into me from the back. I turned my head to see who, it, uh, who I bumped into. Or I mean, Technically, if, if I felt something from behind me, they bumped into me, so you know. The owl immediately returned to its song of screeching. <laughs> Uh oh, you are adorable! What's wrong, pumpkin? Oh, I'm not the devil. Okay, well, I thought that in the game, like, page, it said that I was playing as a devil. Okay, well, alright. Devil asked, melody of madness weaving between each of her words. You aren't doubting the Almighty Song, are you? If you are, you shouldn't ruin the opportunity for the rest of us, right? The hanged man shook his head. The owl stopped its scream as soon as it saw death. Would he, not be, would he not be curious as to why the messenger of disaster falls silent upon you? Fair enough, is all the devil said. Temperance, her walking partner, merrily put a quiet hand on the devil's shoulder, urging her to continue. And so, we walked. No, you were sitting down. That's what you said. You sat in. You sat down while walking. Something like that. No, 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 no. As the fool reached the house's door, the lines braided into each other to form one. In order of our positions in the major arcana, we entered the house, filling its emptiness with light and sound, for the first time since its owners first sank into the floorboards. Ah, oh, such a cool thing to say. Ah, why? Why don't? Why, why are we here? Also, what about the radio thing? We're not, we're not we supposed to do that on the way? You know? Something like that. Inside the house uh, harbored its own chill. The moon wrapped her arms around herself, rubbing circles into her skin with her thumbs. Her brother, the sun, watched with one sullen eye. He started pulling off his jacket, but he hesitated and slipped it back over his shoulders. You know, these masks with a single eye on, on them... They seem to be a, a big hindrance. I'm sure it's something to do with, like, you know, uh, being part of the cult or whatever, but, like, it seems like a big hindrance and very annoying to walk with, you know, just saying. 
we sit in a circle with the fool and the magician at the north face of the room, the hangman and I linger at the south. The high priestess stepped from her spot and placed herself in the middle of all in the middle so all members could see and hear her. Just to remind everyone of the rules. You'll be passed a, a, by you'll be passed a radio by one of your fellow members of the Arcano. You will then tune into any station you desire. If it is the station with his song, we will know. If it is not his station, pass to the member you to your left. We will repeat this process until it has been found. A light yet melancholy voice rang out from the collective. Question. Oh, I love the little uh, uh, infinity symbol on her. Oh, that'd be such a cool like, character idea for like D and D, like a priestess, like a character who has like an infinity symbol on her uh, head and it has been touched by like a god or something like that, and him has that hasn't given latent power. And they don't realize it, even though they're powerful. Like later on, they realize it to access their infi infi infinitum or infin infinitarum, which gives them uh, access to unbelievable power or something like that, and it like glows. And it's a very cool idea. Strength asks, raising her hand. The high priest is on it, allowing her to continue. Do you believe the Almighty will give us hints as to where his station is? Though the radio is filled with sin, a small number of stations manage to play almost worthy music. We could mistake it for his song. That is true. You're right. A another voice spoke up deeper than the previous. What if you're unable to hear it? Empress pondered, fingers inter interlaced in her lap. Hey, hey, oh, Empress, how you doing? You look very, very ragged and very dead scary. We may be worthy of his love. We are only human. We may not be able to hear his gift of music. I believe we will be able to hear. The high priestess answered, confidence overflowing in her voice. That's a lot of confidence in you. You might want to check those words. Perhaps it will not be heard in our ears, but it will be heard in our bones, within our blood, within our brains. And what of the, of the signs, Justice asked. Her fingers tapped impatiently against her knuckles. He has not told me this himself, the high priestess warned, but her faith stayed strong throughout her words. But I believe we will near bits of it in between the stations, and the closer we get, the louder it becomes. Now, does anyone have any other questions or comments before we begin? She offered, leaving us in silence, which begged to be destroyed. Did I have any reactions? Uh, pleasure the high priest, I mean, pressure the high priestess. Swallow hard out of nerves, shake in anticipation. I will uh, pressure the high priestess because why the heckity weckity not? Ooh boy, let's go get struck down by the hand of God or the devil of his because it's me, so help God you. I raised my voice before I raised my hand. How do we know this is not another fruitless ritual? We have done so many of these, dressed in our masks and costumes and waltzing together between the cracks of our of mundane communities. Yeah, you're right. I, I, for, a, for a second I expected like the game just to like continue after I read it, I don't know why. The high priest just looked um, uh, stunned at my response, even her words were frozen. Hmm. Look at her for trespassing or something even worse. I continue, balling both of my hands to fists. In the mockery of every town we enter, what kind of god sends us on his a quest to find his gift on radio stations? What kind of god takes a whole, makes a whole ritual out of it? It is weird to no one else. Are you no longer faithful? The high priestess asked, uh, though the icy kindness in her voice since melted. Must you be a heathen before we unleash his music upon the world? You've given your life, you've given your memory, all to, the, all to the Almighty. And you sit here and mock his most devout. I felt quiet, knowing that any other response would trigger worse conflict. The High Priestess glared at me and turned away, walking towards her spot between the Magician and the Empress. Faith is a very hard thing to discuss about because faith lies in belief. If you believe in something hard enough, then it becomes your truth, your belief, your faith. And no matter what the facts can be, if you believe something to be true, it is true for you. And this is how it be. And people find comfort in belief. People find comfort in believing in something and having strength in that. So, you know, yeah. It seemed that she was satisfied with my silence. May he make the world his light. May he make the world his love. I prefer darkness, excuse you. Praise be to the almighty. We finished our chants of unity with excitement gently baked into our voices. The high priestess banded the fool 
I handed the fool the radio receiver before re returning to her spot. With a roll of her wrist, we sat down in one fell swoop. All of our eyes were on the fool, who was barely able to contain his excitement. He turned the, he turned the radio on and immediately went scouring on the waves. 88.5, he announced, holding the receiver close to his ear and to listen for the gift. But whatever he turned into was only static. The fool hung his head in shame and handed the receiver to the magician. You ever try going to like, like having a list of usable or used frequencies? That would help you out a lot more right now. Just saying. You really believe you could get it immediately, especially by turning it so low? It's not the lower high that really matters technically it's just the station it's 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 business more than um faith i guess or laughing i don't know mitch could only laugh as the fool tried to hide himself in his jacket when it was his turn however the uh his eye was wide with confusion why mm. his hands were moving cradling the radio with one and tuning the other the action did not seem like it was his. What's wrong, magician? The moon asked, leaning from her cross like position to get a better look at him. Are you in control? 107.7, the magician replied, a frantic tone that was being swallowed by emptiness in his voice. He handed the receiver off to the high priestess. It felt as if another's hand was were guiding me. The high priestess looked calmer than the man next to her. She gave the receiver another cursory glance before her, her hands began to work the same magic of tuning at the mercy of something invisible. 92.3, she muttered. I think I understand why we cannot pick for ourselves. The receiver was handed off to the Empress. The High Priestess's hands were shaking. The Empress was more careful, more grounded, in, and r realized reality than the worshippers uh, who came before her. She examined the bright numbers of the previous station Ran a finger along the radio's antennae. He tuned the radio with the com uh, with the command that she was always known for. Her eyes closed, and she let out her own faith. She was at the station for her. Ninety-three point five. The empress announced, and from here, he passed the radio to the emperor. It's for fairness, I believe that the Almighty Himself is guiding our hands. He's already selected who will be the one to harbor His son. Has it? Has he really? Oh, the Ankh is there. That's cool. That's very cool. I think, I think that's what it is. It's the Isis symbol for like... No, the... Uh, right? I, I forgot what it's called. It's the symbol for rebirth or life or something like that. Um, the Emperor thanked his wife quietly for the gift of the waves. If you hear the bits of his voice through the radio, we will be more likely to want to tune in station by station until one of us reaches it. He explained as his hands hand fiddled with the knob. How then would it be fair to those who did not have a chance to tune the radio as all... As if the, all these words are going in, in through my head. Kind of sign at my beginning at each number. Remember uh, them to small brothers until a price. Yeah, you talk a lot. So the one who would receive the life eternal, the one who would find God on the radio, was already predetermined, predetermined by him. I'm assuming that there's also like a metaphor for like the fourth, breaking the fourth wall, as in the author, the creator of this game, is the one who has already predeterminedly chosen. So you know. Mm. Eighty-nine point five. He nodded, and he passed the radio on to the next member. The Hierophant was smiling through, the, through his eye as he caressed the radio. He began tuning the radio to find it the next station. Oh, isn't, the, isn't it wonderful how the divine drives us? He sang, allowing himself to be pulled by the strings of fate. He is our teacher, and we are his students, his, spreading his love. We are the ones who carry his lessons. Multiple other members nodded along to his words. Others seemed to be too focused on the radio itself to have a reaction. 106.3, the Hierophant hesitated on his answer, as if he was focused on something else. He brought the radio receiver to his ear and narrowed his eye, focusing on finding a musical path of breadcrumbs. It's Hansel and Gretel. It's Hansel and Gretel. Oh my god, it, we are finding breadcrumbs in the forest. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Uh, do you hear that? She asked. The Hierophant handed the radio off to the lovers. She held the radio up to her left ear, listening to whatever the Hierophant was hinting to. The lovers gasped, hugging the radio with glee. Hmm. I can hear him, she shrieked. She rode the radio to the urn that was sitting next to her. 
as they're trying to force her dead lover's ashes to listen. That's gonna work, yes. I can barely hear his melody. We must be close. Oh, what beautiful sound. The wheel of fortune beamed. Leaning her head on one cheek, her eye was alight with amusement. What light for sure. The tower agreed, his fingers at his, at his knees, interlocked, decorated with small cuts and bruises. What were they talking about? I could hear nothing. The lovers of the Almighty guide her hands across the knob um, to tune the radio. Those on either side of her watch her with intent and curiosity. 95.1, she read. And the previous happiness left her voice. Hanging her head, she handed off the radio to Charlotte. Sh char sh chariot. The chariot paused once they received the radio. They studied each detail with scrutiny. From the knobs to the speakers. From the lights to the an antennae. From the material to the texture. It was obvious that they were frustrated. Nevertheless, they began tuning the radio for a new station. Wrists loose, fingers light. I did not mind him giving me guidance and putting on a show, but I do not like these methods, they confess. Are we to sit here in suspense when someone gets close to his music, only for him to take us far away from the light with the next tune? A new kind of silence fell over the crowd. I like my freedom to be level with my guidance. I, Though it may seem like they don't, they don't want to continue the thought. You know how it be sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. My feelings do not matter, 105.3. Char the chariot had handed the radio to Strength, who took it up uh, with open arms. Unlike those who came before her, Strength went immediately to tuning the radio. Oh, okay, that's good for her. Not a single word poured from her lips that was unnecessary. 98.1, she declared, her voice a calm wave of relief. I can hear it, his music, his ever so sweet song. I look forward to release it upon this world. I heard nothing. She passed the radio to the person next to her. Although she sang praises, it seemed that she was thankful to get the device out of her hands. The hermit placed the lantern in front of them, replacing the empty space in their hands with the radio. The anticipation is hard, Chariot, they commented as they tuned the drive. But it can all be worth it in the end, will it not? We are worshippers, we are believers, and tonight we may become martyrs. Several eyes fell onto me. Death, the inevitable. So I am death, but like I was also not death as well. Hmm. 9619. Hey, nice. Handed the they handed the radio to the Wheel of Fortune and picked up the lantern back. Why don't you go put the light in the middle? The world suggested. The sun is tucked among the clouds and then is able to go to sleep. We need to be able to see each other uh, once his song has been found. This is why you don't choose a broken down place like this. You choose a place like a hotel or something like that. You rent it. You rent out the common area with like lots of nice lights. You can even get people to record the thing. You can keep. You can get people to people serve you food. So much nicer. Come on, come on. Think better. Now, if you like the out, those outside, the wheel of fortune is tripped. Amusing amusement at the tip of her tongue. It's like we're all sitting in one big circle to tell ghost stories. It was best not to talk about what we were not. She noticed her words and went hunting. Went to tune the radio. You know, you love it when the, when the big wheel of fortune starts hunting you down. It did not take her long to find a station. 105.5, she said. And without the wheel of fortune, with the hand of the radio to the person next to her. The hanged man took the radio into his hands. He turned to me and showed off its mechanisms without touch, touching the knobs. Cool, isn't it? He mused, tracing over the digital station numbers with his left index finger. Very cool. Yeah. The high priestess, I just remembered a really cool fact that I knew. Actually, no. I just remembered that I knew a cool fact about radios from way back in the day, but now I don't remember what the fact was. That's really sad. Uh, the high priestess shot him a glare from across the room, much like a mother telling her child to tease, to seize the fun. He turned, he turned the radio until his hand lifted themselves from the machine. 99.1. The hanged man turned it to me, muttering a prayer of luck un under his breath. When the radio fell into my hands, I could feel all 21 sets of eyes on my form. 21 sets of eyes, wow. I wasn't quite sh sure how to react. I sat there, examining each shape and crevice of the device. Not only did I feel compelled by any force, not only did I feel compelled by any force other than my own curiosity to turn the knob and find the station, I could feel the judgment of the high priestess from across the circle. 
I looked back down at the radio and turned to it to its front side. Was something wrong with me? Was there a reason why he was on guiding my hand to find him among the waves? I grounded my beliefs, shook off their eyes. I grounded my beliefs, shook off their eyes. I don't shake, I just shake it off, shake it off, woo do. I had understood for weeks, months even, each behavior that had been learned. Stared as, staring as peer pressure, snickering for lower confidence, masked to knock everyone to the same faceless pedestal. There's power in, in the control and horror in the loss of control. I would turn the knob with the confidence in myself that no one else in this decaying house could ever fathom having. Oh. Unsure of where to turn, I went up a few stations until I landed on one of the hundreds. 104.9, I said with a glooming bite, with a gloom biting at my lips. In hopes of not drawing attention to myself, I delicately and slowly handed the radio to the next person. The radio duties fell onto Temperance. She rubbed her thumb over the numbers that glowed with enough power to make the light visible through her skin. I'm sure you're all nervous of what's to come, she observed, allowing her wrist to spin the knob without another thought. But that's okay. Sometimes we must undergo harsh pressures and extreme emotions in order to reap the rewards. In this case, the reward of was the life eternal. It took only a glance over the other members to register one thing. Under their breaths, each person was silently praying for their ascension. In 9.9, .9, Temperance said. And with that, the radio was handed to the next member. I'll tell you, uh, the suspense is killing me. Oh, sorry, it confused death with devil. I I mean, I'm playing death, but I am the devil. That's, that, that's the confusing part. The devil groaned. If he were turned to this radio without his help, I would have just cheated or something. Devil is, uh, is a wild side. The devil is, in, in, indul devil is indulgence and instinct. She may have said that, but it, it did not mean it was true for her. She was speaking to the forbidden desires of anyone and everyone who sat at that circle. No, oh, that you know me. You know her. You know us. The bored expression painted over her eyes. The devil turned the radio to 95.5. She announced 94.5. The devil's eye was glued to the radio, but her hands were passing it off. If only her hands were free to do as she pleased. Yeah. The tower had no words, for his aura was all that was needed to speak. With his own glance, he was looking for the guilt in each of our eyes, hoping to metaphorically pick out like a vulture with healthy intestines. None of us knew, none of us know our shame. We drank tea mixed with cinnamon and sting nettle, which wiped us of our memories and, and our that is concerning of a high degree do not do drugs to forget who you are all guilt is washed up washed if the person has forgotten 102.3 the tower mumbled the radio was handed off to the next person it was obvious to anyone who had uh, who had seen her that star was freezing in the house her hands shook just enough to make her almost drop the radio the closed eye and calm breaths, she pushed the cold aside in favor of his music. The star is different, is a different sort of freedom to the chariot. The star is connecting with the nature to find the freedom within the self. Our star was not able to practice this, as her hands forced her to find a new radio station. 101.5, she whimpered, immediately handing the radio to her sister. Her arms wrapped delicately around her torso. Are you sure you don't want my jacket, sister? The son offered. No, it's all right, the star replied. I am adorned just as he wanted. If he is coming to this world with, the, with his music, I must be exactly as the Almighty wants me. Something about that sent a shiver down my spine. Next up was the moon. She used her injured left arm to hold the radio. Though none of uh, us remembered her, our past, she recalled scarring her arm horrendously in a hunting accident. She has hidden it in shame ever since. She has said it, it's best to keep the wild at bay. I fear that I did not believe her. 95.5, the moon said. And with a flick of the wrist, she handed off the radio to her brother. The son was the youngest of the celestial bodies. The sisters cared for him like a doll, combing his hair and washed, washing his clothes. Phantom feelings of fled, fledging, uh, fledging siblings flutter in, in my brain, but the thought was is quickly consumed by the et eternal. I am wording hard. He was an artist, and it was obvious on how graceful and controlled his hands were when tuning the radio. I wish we were able to get to know each other better on a personal level. 103.7. He mewled, and with another short pass, the radio was handed to the next member. 
I'm going up pretty quickly, if I do say so myself. Judgment was the newest member. I could not remember the man who, uh, who had come before her. I'll admit, even though I've only been here for a few weeks, I feel like I'm worthy and ready of whatever he has for me. She chortled with a tinge of confidence buried in her throat. If anything, she was free of any doubts that lingered in most of our hearts. I feel like the life eternal is going to be uh, the priest just coming here and just stabbing the person to death and then just leaving, you know? Maybe that, probably that, yeah. Her tuning was quick and precise, much like her tools for healing when one of us ever had been injured. Only a week ago, she bandaged my hand with the delicacy of a professional, even in a kiss for good luck on the fabric. Aww. 97.3, she said. She did not seem too upset that nothing had happened. We had still many channels to search through. You can go through like that 97.3, 0 .2, 0 0.1, 0 .0. It's, it's, you know. Dutchman gave the radio a kiss on the antennae as of an apology and handed the radio to the last member. The world pressed her forward against the radio, nuzzling it like a child would to a stuffed animal. The Empress shifted her position, seeming amused by the action. Thank you for your gift, Almighty, the world praised. Thank you for this family, thank you for your love. She placed the radio in her lap and began tuning. While Judgment was the newest member to join the Arcana, the world is our youngest. She re reminded me of a sister I once had, I, th I think I once had. Perhaps still have. Maybe she is your sister, hmm. 106.5, she announced. And for a few moments, she sat in silence and not yet passing the radio. She was waiting for something to happen. We were waiting for something to happen. But nothing did. The world admitted her own defeat with a sigh. And she handed the radio back to the fool. We continued the cycle once more, looking for the station. 91.9, 103.1, 99, a lot of stations, a lot of stations, a lot of stations. I'm assuming there's some, some, some sort of code there, but, you know. I could tell by the Hank Band's second radio tune, the room was getting anxious. Eyes were darting across the room, feet were chapping against the floor, knuckles were being cracked. But they knew there was nothing to be done. They were being guided by a hand which was not theirs, playing them like actors of suspense of a horror film. Almost like the devil would do! Dun dun dun! They were guided, but I was not. I had an inkling based on the de deductions as to which station was playing his music. I could not hear the sounds they had been describing, angelic hums and radiance in the form of sound. Their eyes would light up whenever someone tuned to a number in the low hundreds, high nineties. Oh, I could do this as an opportunity to escape. This is wrong, this is all wrong. I dropped the radio, allowing it to hit the floor and splinter it into hundreds of pieces. Multiple of the members gasped, but no one had moved. I rushed inside, inside of the middle of the circle, grabbing the hermit's lantern. I can't keep living like this, I huffed. Sweat beating down my forehead. They tried walking towards me, hands out, trying to calm me down. I swung a lantern in their direction and in fear they backed off. Monsters afraid of the light as, 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 they, uh, as they oh so worshipped. My knuckles turned wider uh, the tighter I gripped on, onto the lantern's handle. Then the idea came. I threw the lantern onto the floor. It exploded in a supernova of glass and metal. Flying in all directions, the Arcana shielded their, their single eyes from the flying shards of glass. Burst f uh, forth from the lantern was a flame which clung to the wooden floorboards like dust def black fabric. Flabric! It quickly spread across the living room. I had no time nor desire to watch its flames blossom and instead I ran for the door. I ran into the front door with my shoulders first, causing the door to burst off its hinges. I, I did not let that stop me, I and instead I kept running. Seconds after I left the porch, the roof of the house came crashing down with a crackle of flames, wood and glass. I did not care. Smoke had clogged my lungs and my body was starting to feel numb, but I had, kept, I had to keep going. And so I kept running. Through my hysteria and flight, I, I tried tracing my steps back to the neighborhood where we had met. And the streets were littered with more people. Children were adorned by the handmade costumes, carrying bags of candy with smiles on their faces. And they would collapse onto the cement of a sidewalk, knees skidding on the asphalt of the road instead. In haste, I tore off my mask and wiped the ash and sweat off my skin. I was alive. Excuse me, are you all right? A voice asked. I looked up to see a man, probably in his late 20s, looking down at me with concern plastered on his face. Next to him was a little girl, about eight or so, wearing a green jacket and a hockey mask. At his question, I, could, I couldn't help but laugh. It lasted only a few moments, though, as I coughed up more dust and stale air. 
No, I replied, finding my voice full of growls from running. I, crazy cult, was trying to sacrifice someone to deliver music to the world. The man did not seem to care about the cult part, but once I mentioned music, his face had changed into one of concern. Music? Yes, I answered. They were trying to find him through the radio or something, but it wasn't affecting me. And I realized how crazy it was, and I... The man kneeled down to the little girl, giving her a pat on the head and a soft smile. Daddy has to have this person up, okay? I'll come see you again in a bit. You, your, your uncles are over by the playground. Go hang out with them and tell them something came up, okay? I love you. So he, planted a, he planted a kiss on her mask and waved at her, waved at her, waved at her as she ran east, disappearing into the trees. Sorry about that. He apologized. Let me take you to the hospital, and then I can help you out with this music cult problem. He held out a hand. I feel like he might be part of the cult or know something because of the way he said that. Just saying. He held the hand out to me. I grabbed it, and he helped me to stand up. I felt myself wobbling, but the stranger was able to st stabilize me. We walked together until the, until I felt my um, until I felt myself collapse. He caught me before I hit the ground, but my mind had already hit its limit. I passed out only moments later. Death is inevitable, but we cannot escape it. But I was sure as hell did for now. Ending three, doubt. Interesting. Very interesting. Can I skip through text if I can? I want to see the other endings. I wanna, oh, I can. Very cool. What if I do uh, hopeful? What if I do life? There might be something living person inside there. Who's calling unable to find? Okay, life though. There was uh, uh, shaking and shaking anticipation. I clap my hands together. Obviously, smile. Okay, uh, praise Almighty. I cheered. Um, may the knowing embrace him by him. Hermes shared me that much amazing. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yep. All right, same things. Um, grounded by my beliefs. Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay, that's something happening. Um. I looked down at the radio and tuned tune to my guests. 101.1 I announced. I looked at around there at the rest of the members waiting for a response. At first, they did, they did nothing, only keeping their eyes glued to, them, glued to me. Then, without a warning, they all started crying, verbal cries of joy and release mixed with tears that began soaking up the old floorboards. Members threw their hands up, they hugged each other, they gripped at the chest and screamed at the ceiling. Death, you've done it! You found his song! Still, I could hear nothing. All I could do was stand and smile. Though no one could see it uh, through mass and pure joy, I placed the radio on the ground to allow everyone to hear it. They all stopped it once I did that and turned to look at me. Had I done something wrong? Found a song, Death, she con congratulated. Oh, she they're gonna kill me, aren't they? Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I immediately started seeing lights dance across my vision. Troll body, first finger past my skin, I choked back sobs. Uh, I was sure they uh, were sorrow. I screamed, I couldn't stop screaming. Their con, I found where they were belonging for harsh intentions. Uh... Uh... Okay, I'll go with the last one, which I believe is scared. I had always been scared, blah, 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 blah. Nervous. Uh, don't worry. Okay, death. Sure, something had died in here. Doors were closed. Yeah, I'm sure uh, probably something has died in here. You're not wrong about that. Uh, swallow hard uh, about the nerves. Yeah, I'm a nervous. I'm always nervous. I'm scared and nervous. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about death. I am death after all. I wanted to cry. What is cry happening? My mask prevented me from wiping my nose. Yeah, I hit this guy. I hit this place. I hit it. I wanted to go home. Yeah, okay, cool. That all happens, but I don't decide to guess. I only wanted to run. I looked down at the radio and then look at the okay, fine. None of it. Uh, okay, it began to travel inside of me. Cool. Uh huh. Uh, they. We swat them away. It's okay to be scared. She was scared, I know. Okay. I scream, I can. Two girls backed a few steps away. Had no guidance in the night. Okay. Uh, life journal was just death. What if it's. Blah, 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 blah. With a clash, I threw my radio on the ground. Stop this death, world's cry. Stop it, please. You've ruined this chance to use the world's grace. Okay. You know, you not usually. I am a useless animal. Thank you for recognizing me. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, well, they were gonna swarm me and kill me. Okay, cool. And they eat me, obviously, you know. 
fear. So it's fear, uh, hopelessness, and uh, hope, and then death, I think. Very cool, very cool concept. And I really like that in a way. And I really wish I could bring that to light in a way. I thought about like adding a cult or something to my D&D campaign, but it, it just doesn't match right now. But in the future, I would love to do that. I would love to use many aspects of the world in different ways. And I think it's such a cool thing. And this especially, they, the way they make these kind of games, it's more about the ethereal, it's more about the feel, it's more about the people rather than the people themselves, if that makes sense to you. And I want to be able to incorporate that. They have really good narration, and this especially had a very, very good narration. And yeah, that was just really nice. That's about it. God is in the radio. Uh, yeah, I feel like it needed a little, little bit more backstory to it. But other than that, it was a, it was just you know its own little thing. I love how it, it's its own little thing, but it somehow connect, it somehow still connects with the other rest of the world, uh, rest of the series. And that's really cool. And that's about it. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and goodbye.